secretly standing on my tiptoes back here, just so you know. Even with heels, it's still a height issue. But welcome to ASU. Thank you for joining us. Who is here from Arizona? Okay, I'm going to flip it. Who's from out of state? All right, I see an eagle shirt, so I'm assuming far, far east? No? Where are you guys from? LA. LA. Ah, okay. Cool. Who else? Out of state. Where are you guys from? Philadelphia. Okay. Oh, there's an eagle shirt. Here we go. Sorry, I need to put my glasses on. Don't hold me accountable for anything if it has to do with vision. During the pandemic, I lost all of my glasses because I didn't need to see far away anymore. So now two years later, I am pretty much blind at this point. So it, it gives me the privilege of being able to make jokes on a microphone without even knowing if you're laughing because I can't even see your faces right now. So thank you for laughing. I appreciate it. Um, well, my name is Lisa Faulkner. I am the senior director of student, the student experience. So basically, there are people like me and my colleague Jessica and Dean and all of the people you've talked to today who are here to, um, to basically just tell you about ASU, tell you about the student experience, help answer any questions you have. What we usually say as advice with events like this is think about what questions you want to have answered so you can ask those questions because we all get really excited. We've all had a lot of espresso and coffee at this point. So we just wanna tell you everything about ASU. Um, but if you have questions that you want to have answered, your goal is to get those questions answered today. Um, write them down, put them in your cell phone and make sure you find one of us because ultimately the success will be measured on whether or not you got the information you needed today. So be sure to ask the questions. We know that parents and family members have different questions than students, so feel free to ask those questions. If you have questions about the fun and the community, what it's like to make friends, or if you have questions about tuition or scholarships or housing, dorms, safety, whatever it is, let us know. We are happy to help, and we wanna help. We'd rather be here with you um, answering questions and talking um, way more than just sitting in front of our computers. Anybody in my role, is it's like a weird extrovert where we get more energy from talking to people. So I even feel weird just talking at you and not engaging with you right now, and it's only been a minute and a half. So, um, well, a couple of things I wanna run through before I introduce our panelists and tell you about the exciting day we have in front of us. Um, the number one thing is that you are basically sitting here at ASU's downtown Phoenix campus. ASU has four campuses here in Maricopa County. So the downtown Phoenix campus is purposely put right here in the middle of the downtown Phoenix area because the degree programs that are housed here are um, the, the opportunities students will find are found in this area pretty easily. So any internship experiences, any career experiences, um, like coffee chats that they wanna have with a professional, any of that can easily be found if you are a pre-health student, if you're a journalism student, if you're a public service and public policy student, if you're tourism, sports and recreation management, any of those type of degree programs, they are housed downtown purposely for the fact that those students get to have those career and internship experiences. Then WP Carey School of Business, on the flip side, is housed in the Tempe campus and has locations around the valley because those students are experiencing a, a broader community. They're closer attached to the Tempe area. Um, and some other students are also doing career, excuse me, classes at West Campus, which is in Glendale. Um, I wouldn't recommend going to Glendale today because that's also where Super Bowl is being housed, so it might be kind of busy. But if you did want to see West Campus, it, it would be worth maybe the, some of the traffic you might hit. And technically, it's closer to this side than like the Super Bowl is a little further, further west. So if you wanted to check out West Campus today, it might be worth the drive. Just watch for the traffic. But basically, the main thing we want you to, to keep in mind as you are looking at the, the experiences of the downtown Phoenix campus, and of course with, um, with our colleagues from WP Carey, is that whether or not you are a downtown Phoenix campus student, or a Tempe student, or a West Campus student, you are still a Sun Devil. Your experience is going to be the same. The resources are the same. Every campus has a library, which is exciting, right? You want to know there's a library. <laughs> Um, every campus has food. Every campus has like 18 Starbucks. 
Every campus has clubs and student organizations. And the cool thing too is that if you are a downtown Phoenix campus student, but you want to do something at the Tempe campus, you can hop on the free shuttle and the shuttle will just take you to the Tempe campus. So if you want to go to a football game, if you want to go see a play or see the theater, if there is a yoga class that you would rather take downtown, or excuse me, at Tempe instead of here, um, because it works with your schedule, you can do that with no problem. In fact, a lot of the student workers who are working here today actually are taking classes in Tempe too because they found classes that they were excited about and they, they wanted to have that experience too. The shuttle is a simple way to make your, your kind of ASU dreams come true. But other than that, I know that with today, the main points that we wanted to kind of focus in now and pivot towards is our panel. And then after our panelists speak, we'll break up into some tours and give you the chance to, um, to take a deeper dive into the academics, um, hear about more about the internships, ask questions about faculty and advising, career outcomes, things like that. Um, but with the panelists in particular, this is your chance to basically hear from people who have been there before. They know what it's like to be a student. They know the challenges students face and they know what it's like to overcome those challenges. I'm sure at least one of these panelists has cried because the class they took was really hard or the professor was really, really mean, stuck with deadlines, challenged them beyond their comfort zone. But we all know that's where the growth comes. So when you are pushed and you're challenged through the rigorous the academics that you're, you're doing here and the classes you're taking here, that's where you become the person that you're meant to be and the sun devil that you're meant to be and eventually the alum that you are meant to be. So ultimately our goal at this point is that all of you will one day be panelists, will be pinging you to say, come, come speak to a bunch of prospective students and join us to be a panelist at one of our events. So take advantage of the opportunity to, to talk to our panelists. Um, but without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our moderator who's gonna moderate the panel, um, Jackie, who is actually a Cronkite alum, and she will kick it off with the, the panel. Thanks, Jackie. Hello, so excited to be here today. I'm a broadcast associate at Fox Sports. My name is Jacqueline Chung. I graduated from Cronkite School in 2016. Um, I graduated in, with a BA in journalism and mass communication, and I also got a minor from the Herberger School in film and media production. A benefit to also coming to ASU is you can graduate early. So I actually graduated early and made my mom and dad actually really excited. Um, but we have a great panel for you today. I would love for the panelists to introduce themselves, tell me your name, what you're doing now, and your connection with ASU. I'll start with Meg. Hi everybody, my name is Meg Ingram. Um, I'm currently Senior Activation Coordinator for the Phoenix Suns and the Mercury. Um, I graduated from ASU and Barrett the Honors College in 2020. Um, I have a BS in Finance and a BA in Sports Business. Um, I guess we'll probably get into the sports journey a little bit later, but that's kind of my, my ASU background and, and what I'm doing now. Hi everybody, um, my name is Kara Blackstone. I work for Major League Baseball in the Data Operations Department. I'm a coordinator in the Data Operations Department. I graduated um, from ASU in 2018 in the Parks and Rec Management. Good morning. My name is Dina Garner-Smith. I did not go to ASU. However, I have worked at ASU since 2015. Excuse my voice, it keeps going in and out. I hope you can hear me in the back. Okay. Um, and I uh, work in Sun Devil Athletics, and I'm the Senior Associate Athletic Director overseeing diversity, equity, inclusion, and Title IX. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. My name is Don Gibson. My connection with ASU is that I am a professor of practice in the C League Sports Law and Business Program, which is housed at the law school. Uh, my background is I did not attend ASU. I actually attended college in Pennsylvania at Bucknell and Law School at UCLA. But I spent eight years with Major League Baseball. I ran the licensing division there, and I was the chief executive at the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. And I'm in the sports consulting business as well as teaching at ASU. All right, hello everybody. My name is Caleb Che. I'm uh, vice president and general counsel for the Arizona Diamondbacks. I've been there since 2007. I uh, previously worked for the Oakland A's. Um, I also did not go to ASU, but I've been teaching at the law school, teaching various sports law courses uh, since 2011. But my wife and my in-laws are alums, so I've got that going for me. 
Yes, so my mom actually graduated from Cronkite. She was the first graduating class of Cronkite, and she's actually very excited that I'm here. Um, just because we're a mother-daughter duo, but I don't tell her that sometimes just because she gets too excited. Um, but a little bit about how we got here is how did we get in sports? How did I want to do sports? How did you want to do sports? I know growing up I wanted to do film, and actually the only reason I got into sports was because of Cronkite. I started working at Pac-12 Networks with their connection here, and it grew me a love for wanting to work in sports. So Meg, how did you get into sports? Yeah, Jackie and I were talking about this a little bit before we started the panel, but I had no idea that I wanted to work in sports when I first came to ASU. Um, I came in as a business major in the WP Carey, so I was, I was over in Tempe, um, and it really wasn't until my sophomore year that a friend of mine kind of was explaining this internship that she had um, with spring training with the Oakland A's, and I was like, how do I sign up for that? That sounds like so much fun. Um, so she was explaining, yeah, there's a whole major for it at ASU, and I was like, great, sign me up for that. So um, I kept my finance degree, and I added sports business. Um, I spent one year as an intern with the Oakland A's. I ended up getting the internship. Um, and then I spent two years as a promotions coordinator for spring training, some of the best years of my life. It was so much fun. Um, I spent a little bit of time as an intern um, for the D-backs in their finance department, which was a great experience, but taught me that I kind of wanted to stick more towards the, the personal side of sports rather than the, the finance side. Um, and then from there, I was lucky enough to land a full-time job up in Oakland with Oakland Athletics um, in partnership marketing. So same thing I'm doing now. Um, and I was up there for about a year and then kind of got a text that there was an open position um, at the Suns and I was invited to apply and very blessed and thankful that, you know, that opportunity came to me. So um, I've been with the Suns and the Mercury now for just over, just over a year. And it's been, it's been great. Just a little bit going on with us this week, so. <laughs> And Kara, how'd you get with MLB? Um, it's kind of a interesting story. Um, when I was at ASU, I actually didn't know I was going to be in sports. I, when I graduated, I went and did the country club route. I was going to be an event coordinator, and I wanted to do weddings and all the fun things. Um, baseball has been in my life for a very, very long time, and I was doing it kind of on the side as as a hobby while I was going to school, keeping stats for the different spring training teams and then working for the D-backs as well. Um, and just grew the network and talked to as many people as I could. And I was blessed last year and got a full-time job with MLB. So it just right place at the right time and made the right connections. Mm -hmm. And Don, I know you worked with the MLB as well. How was that? It was incredible. Um, I never planned on working in baseball. I was always passionate about baseball. I was actually an entertainment lawyer in Los Angeles, and I came to spring training in 1988. I'm dating myself. I'm a lot older than most people in this room. And after two weeks of going to baseball games between Tucson and Phoenix, I said, gosh, you know, it's really cool representing people like Jane Fonda and Marlon Brando, but baseball is my passion. I want to get a job in baseball. And I had a friend who was on the faculty of Stanford where I taught for a year at the law school. and he was doing salary arbitrations for Major League Baseball. Started sending my resume around, and I tell this story because it really points out the challenges of getting into sports, and the fact of the matter is for most people it's accidental. And in my case, my resume went around to every team you can think of, to the commissioner's office, and I kept hearing the same thing, impressive resume, no job. And I had to go back to New York for a wedding, and I had gotten an invitation from the baseball commissioner's office to just meet with them if I'm ever in town. And I call him up that August, and this was six months after I, my resume was being circulated. And at that meeting, I was told, we now have a job open, and you're the first person we're interviewing. And that's how I got into sports. So, you know, the story is build a network of relationships, get the experience that's relevant to the industry, and at some point, a door will open for you. Dina, for you, I know you've been almost everywhere. You're, right now, you're with the Sun Devil Athletics. How did you get to being in, Sun Devil, being in athletics and working here at ASU? So like Don and all my colleagues said, um, I think getting in sports is really, you have to have a network. And the way that I 
came to sports, I did not plan to go into sports. I've always wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer since I was eight years old. So I became a lawyer. I worked as a prosecuting attorney for a little under 10 years. I got tired of putting people in prison, in jail. And we have, in Indianapolis, Indiana, which is where I'm from, we have a lot of sports teams there. And I started seeing athletes coming through the system. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I have to figure out what can I do to give back. So at the, at the time, um, um, the NCAA moved from Kansas to Indianapolis, Indiana. They lost three-fourths of their workforce. So there was a position, there were many positions, but there was a position that came open in the investigations department, and I applied. I didn't have a sports background. I played sports, I played softball, but I didn't play um, in college or in high school with the club team. So I applied randomly, and then I started building a network of people that were from Indianapolis that worked at the National Collegiate Athletic Association. And I said, hey, I know I don't have a sports background, but I'm interested in the investigations area because I had already done investigations. And then that division um, of enforcement services, there was a position specifically uh, relevant to gambling, and I had prosecuted gambling cases. So I was like, hey, that's my hook. So I was able to get um, in contact with a supervisor, and then I started working in the enforcement services department for, uh, like I said, about 10 years there almost. And also, happenstance, the National Football League Combine, Scouting Combine is in Indianapolis. So I, be, I became acquainted with the folks that worked in the um, investigations department, the security department, and also player personnel, because they wanted to figure out how to better educate the young men coming to the combine about what they would look forward to before they became a rookie. So we started working with um, the personnel department and also the security department to devise um, some education to communicate to the guys coming to the combine. And then a position became open in the security department and with my legal background, and I had worked with professional athletes, um, like I said, through the system, and then I had worked with coaches through my NCAA experience. I started working um, at the National Football League in the security department when that position became available. So that's how I applied. So I worked there for almost nine years, and then there was a position that came open during Super Bowl um, in 2015, and I applied for that position. And that's how I got the position at ASU. ASU has many different opportunities here, and I think that's also why a lot of us love coming to ASU. My favorite personally was I got to go to the Rio Olympics in 2016. I know Meg almost got to go to the 2020 oh, so ones. So <laughs> um, but I want to go to Caleb and our instructors and professors. What can students learn in your classes and what do you teach here? Well, again, I've, I've been teaching at the law school for 11 years um, and I was teaching a sports law course which covered everything related to sports, international sports, amateur, Title IX, professional sports, but now that the, uh, the CELIC Sports Law and Business Program developed, professors are now teaching in, you know, in an entire semester what I was trying to teach in one night. So, uh, you know, I've, so I've taught a various different courses. Um, I've had a, a great group of students. I have J both JD students as well as master's students. Uh, I also have uh, bare honor students. So we ha I've had a lot of undergrad students take my course, and some of them have done better than the law students, you know, so there's a, you know, it's a terrific uh, class of students that I have in my classroom. What about you, Don? I have been teaching in the program since 2015. I, um, I was asked to be an adjunct professor back then when the program was being launched. And I saw the vision and I really knew I wanted to be part, part of it because I think it's important that we as professionals in the industry, industry help pave a pathway for those who aspire to be where we are. And the, one of the wonderful things about what we do here at ASU in the Sealy Sports Law and Business Program, like, like Caleb said, I've had undergraduates in some of my classes and they have done incredibly well. But we introduce them and immerse them in the study of sports from both a legal perspective and a business perspective. And the faculty is comprised of real experts in the field. I mean, you'll, and I'll tell you this because we've all been there. When you're in college or graduate school, you tend to learn from people who have great intellectual knowledge but very little practical experience. What they learn, they learn by going to conferences or reading books. We have been in the trenches. 
And we're able, we're able to pass on to our students personal experience that will help them from a business as well as a educational standpoint. And that to me is really incredibly beneficial. After I leave here, I teach a class with former Commissioner Selig. And we teach a class together on the impact of Major League Baseball on law and society. That's a whole different perspective in terms of how you teach a class because now you have a commissioner, a former commissioner, someone who's been in baseball for 50 years, and someone like me who's been in, who was in baseball with him for eight plus years, and in professional sports for 30 years. So from a student standpoint, what better way to learn than from people who can, who, like I say, I teach what I know, and I know what I teach. And that, to me, is a real benefit for the students who enroll here. Getting experience is huge and so beneficial. I know here at ASU, because of the opportunities, Kara, what opportunities did you get here at ASU that you enjoyed and learned from? Um, I got the opportunity to meet some fantastic people to start. Um, being so close to Chase Field and got to see, um, we actually got a tour of Chase Field, which was really neat. I had been there before, but there were other parts that I hadn't seen, so that was a good, fun opportunity. And Meg, what, I know you did a bunch of internships here. What internships did you do, and how did you learn from them? Yeah, so I think, I mean, to offer my unsolicited advice, I think internships are probably one of the most important things you can do to get your foot in the door with sports. So my very first internship was with the Oakland A's, so I feel very lucky that I got to do a little bit of everything with that internship, and it kind of you know, introduced me to different areas of sports that might be, you know, possibilities down the road. Um, and then besides the Oakland A's internship, I mentioned to Jackie that I did the um, uh, DBACS finance internship, which was great. It was a six-month internship um, in the finance and accounting department. Um, and it was a great experience. I got to meet so many great people over at the DBACS. I made so many amazing connections. Kind of taught me that I really didn't want to go the finance route, but I'm so thankful that I did that because, you know, it kind of taught me, um, you know, what I was good at, what I wasn't good at, and it helped me kind of to narrow down um, the path that I'm on now, and I feel very confident that, you know, the one that I'm on now, um, all of my prior decisions have kind of led me here, so um, I, feel, I feel like I'm in a very good spot with where I am. For me, I always wanted to be um, an athlete here at Arizona State. How do you, Dina, how do you believe that if you were an athlete here at Sun in Arizona State, how does that benefit you? Sure. Um, I think that's a great question. I think, well, with our student athletes, we have 26 sport teams. So I get to work with all of them across all sports because of the job that I have in DEI and then also Title IX. And so I do a lot of mentoring with the student athletes. And I would say that being a student athlete, they're, you're regarded as a leader on the team, not only that, but also by your campus peers. So if you get a chance before you leave today, um, I hope they're still out there. We have five students who are here. They're part of the 942 crew. So there are student athletes, cheering squad. There are students that are just passionate about sports. Um, we have a great connection point with students who are very avid sports fans that are also helpful for our student athletes so that they can understand it's important to give back and it's important to be a leader and the ways that the student athletes can really benefit not just by participating in their sport but also exploring different aspects of the sport that they participate in if they want to work in the field not necessarily at the professional level as an athlete because that opportunity is very very limited and narrow but they can work in sport because they've played and they need to understand how what they're learning from their coaches can be translated into a career if they want to become a coach or if they want to become a scout or if they want to work in legal like I've worked in legal or like Don and Caleb or if they want to work in the business aspect or finance or marketing or communications and they can do it through all of these wonderful programs that ASU has while they're still participating in their sport. So we have a lot of student athletes that take advantage of internship opportunities to work in sport while they're still participating in sport. And I think that's the great benefit about this unique setup that we have at ASU. The other thing that I would say that it makes us very unique, you can get any kind of a degree at ASU. You don't have to go to 15 different classes over 15 years to get what you really want to do in life. And then as a student athlete, if you're passionate about sport or want to learn about the business aspect of sport, there's really a lot of unique opportunity here. Don, do you also believe that it doesn't matter what 
major you get, you learn the same and you can work in sports any major you get, anything you learn? No, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And what I will say is I, I tell the students, you may have an interest in sports, but first you have to learn and appreciate the breadth of what working in sports means. Most people have a very myopic view and they think, well, if I'm going to work in sports, I'm going to work for a team or a league. Well, you can have a career in sports and work at the high school level. Every state has a sports association that controls and manages high school sports competition. That's a career path. You can work in the insurance industry and have a career in sports. All you have to do is look at any ballpark, any arena, any stadium, and look at the companies that advertise and promote themselves to that sports audience. They have dedicated staff working on sports-related business enterprises. So yes, you don't have to have a particular degree to be able to get an opportunity in sports. You just have to figure out what you're most passionate about. Because believe me, in some way, it's going to touch sports. If you're interested in technology, it touches sports. If you're interested in science, patents, for example, it touches sports. If you're interested in sociology, it touches sports. Because everything that Dina does is related to soci sociological issues and sociology. Causes like that are beneficial. You might be interested in political science. It touches sports. Every commissioner gets called before Congress at some point. You know, so you think about it. It touches sports in so many ways. If sports is, is something that interests you, find a subject area that you're passionate about, and you will find that in some way it will be connected to sports. Caleb, what has been the best moment in your sports career that you were like, oh my gosh, I'm here? That's an interesting question. Um, to give a little bit about my background really quick too, my first job in sports, I was a ball boy for the Golden State Warriors. Um, and I got that job after writing a letter for three straight years to the organization to get that opportunity. And after finally getting it, a lot of the uh, people who worked in the Warriors locker room worked in the Oakland A's clubhouse. So I got a job as a bat boy with the Oakland A's. And while going to law school, I had the clubhouse manager reach out to the general counsel saying, hey, give our kid a uh, opportunity to be an intern. So I interned and then after graduating law school, uh, I became a full-time attorney with the team. So I used to say, one season I was doing the players' laundry, and the next season I was doing their contracts. Um, so I was with the A's for three years, and I decided to be a real lawyer and go work at a firm, and I did not like it. I'm a much better lawyer for having done it for almost two years, but I just realized my passion was, was in sports. So I quit my job without having another job lined up, wrote letters to every team in baseball, sent it with a box of candy, Figured, you know, I got to do something to make myself stand out. And it just so happened the Diamondbacks were looking to, some, to bring somebody in. So when you're asking me, like, getting the opportunity to get back in the industry um, was great. It made me appreciate it that much more, having been out of it. Um, and that's why I really made the best out of the last 15 years. I mean, and I've technically been the number two attorney at the team for my first 13, 14 years. But I said I'd rather be the number two there than the number one elsewhere. Just, you know, great quality of life, working at ASU, the environment, you know, everything that Arizona has to offer. And, you know, I have been, you know, promoted to the number one a little, almost a year ago now. Um, but going to what Don said about other opportunities in the industry, I always tell people, we have 300 employees who don't wear uniforms. You know, IT, government affairs, community, not like, even if you're like nonprofit, I mean, every major professional sports team has a nonprofit affiliate, you know, so if you want to give back to the community and, and through the, you know, the medium of sports, you know, there are opportunities like that, you know, finance, marketing. So um, it's really just finding your passion, what you're really, in, be good at it, you know, and continue to network, pursue opportunities. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's a very competitive industry, sports. But like Don said, you know, there's high schools, there's college athletics, there's international. Don't just think, I get a lot of students, I just be a sports agent or a general manager, right? I'm like, well, you know, those are very, very volatile positions anyway, even if you were to be able to get a, a something like that in our industry. But there's a lot more stable and, and great opportunities. And a lot of opportunities can kind of transfer. I know people who have gone from the San Jose Sharks to the Carolina Panthers you know, to a league office, someone who worked for the Professional Bull Riders Association, and they've transferred that skill set. So just don't think, I only want to work on football. You can definitely take those skills, you know, to other areas in our industry. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, one thing to also keep in mind is that, as Caleb said, it's a very competitive industry. 
But the industry has grown tremendously. When I started at Major League Baseball, I was one of two lawyers in the commissioner's office, two. And my office was 10 doors down from the commissioner's office. That's how small we were. Now they have a building where they occupy like eight or nine floors. So th there are more opportunities, but with that has come population growth, certainly. But the industry has matured, and it's now more of a business than it was 35, 40 years ago. So with that in mind, all of these kinds of opportunities that when Caleb talks about the D-backs, baseball clubs weren't doing that 25, 30 years ago. They just weren't set up that way. Now there's a whole different business mindset. It's really an industry with international opportunities. Think about this. If you're bilingual or multilingual, what kind of opportunities do you think exist for you? Goodness. Let's just look at the NBA. Look at Major League Baseball and the international you know, um, player base. Just to be a translator could be an opportunity for you to work in sports. So just keep that in mind. Going off of what Caleb and Don said, I work in Fox Sports, so I have to learn all the different kinds of sports, but there's so many opportunities because of it, because you could do basketball, football, baseball. If you don't know hockey, it's okay. If you don't know NASCAR, it's okay. They won't put you on that sport. You, you get to do the sports that you know and you're comfortable with and you love showcasing. I know, for me, it can be difficult sometimes being a woman in sports just because Honestly, when I travel on the road, I'm the only woman. I travel with 50 different guys. Meg, what is a challenge for you being a woman in sports, but how do you overcome that? I feel very lucky in the fact that, you know, I think I came into sports at such a great time where, you know, women are celebrated in sports and they're welcomed in, in front office positions. So I personally have felt very, very lucky to be surrounded by you know, peers and employees and managers and VPs who celebrate the success of the women that are in positions like mine. Um, but I think, generally speaking, you know, just reminding yourself that, like, you belong in the room that you've been invited into. And if you're in that room, like, you, and if you're given the opportunity to speak, like, you're there for a reason. And it's important just not to forget that. Um, and you know, people want to hear your ideas and just kind of constantly reminding yourself that, you know, I belong here, this is for me. Um, that's something that I kind of have to stick with. But again, like, I, I feel very lucky. Um, the Suns are such a, such a great organization for that and we've come a long, long way. Um, but I just, I feel very supported in, in, in my career in sports, you know, being a woman. Dina, do you find any challenges being a woman in sports? Yep. Um, but I would say it's important for anyone, regardless of your gender, to find allies um, and sponsors. Um, and make sure you're always focusing on giving back because you never know if when you're trying to give back to someone after you've achieved a position, that opens up even more of an opportunity, not just for you, but for someone else because they have a network. So I have my Title IX shoes on. So I, I encourage you to come and see these. So this is a shout out to one of our former um, equipment managers. She was a woman working in football. Her name is Jada Kitna. So at Jada Round the Block, these are her shoes that she created for me. So it's important for us as women, I think, to continue to network with one another, but also for us to, to work across the aisle and work with our male stakeholders and sponsors. Because if you're in football and other environments where it's mainly male dominated, you need to semi, you need to be at the table, but you may not always be at the table because they're on the golf course. So you really need to have that sponsorship um, so that that person can speak for you when you're not there. And then when you are there, you need to be on your game and you need to have your skills and you need to know that they know that you know what your job is, what your expertise is, your experiences, um, because you're, you're an asset. Um, and I think you always continue to grow and to learn from others who are in the profession that may also be males because they've been there for a longer time. And I think you just continue to grow and to build that rapport. Kara, is there anybody who gave you advice where you learned from them and you grew from them from what they told you? As far as from a woman? Could be a woman or a male. Um, yeah, I mean, my mentor, I guess you could call him, he has fought for me from day one. He was like, you are gonna be, you're gonna be something and I'm gonna stick by your side and he's fought 
to this day to to get me where I am and he's just he's been the biggest supporter but kind of what to feed off what Meg said we're in the perfect time for females to be in sports it's it's happening for us it's it's changing yes we still run into challenges and the the old schoolers who have some things to say about it but there's more of of us that can support each other through the way Okay, I have two more questions, and then I would love to open it up to the audience for if they have any other questions. I'll start at the end. If you could all tell me, what is the best piece of advice you would give to Sun Devil hopefuls or people in college now who are looking to get into sports? Take advantage of as many opportunities as you can. I mean, I tell anyone who's working, who wants to work in the industry or looking for internships, I just like, you can't force somebody to give you an internship. You can't force somebody to give you a job. So do as much as you can with what you can control. Take, you know, take courses in what you're interested in. Network with as many people within the industry that you want to work in. Join student organizations, but not only be, a, you know, I said don't even be a member, but be a, be a leader of those organizations. Because, you know, when you're a leader, you're gonna host events like this, and you're gonna be the one, you know, uh, conducting that outreach. And I just said, even, you know, they'll be able to see your, how well you write, how well you, how organized you are, just putting on an event like this. And I mean, most of our interns are people that we have known in some capacity before the internship was posted. You know, because you, you want to have that strong connection and then even if you don't necessarily find an opportunity at one organization, you might know somebody there who could be an advocate for you elsewhere. Um, and then also here in Arizona in this market, I can't think of a bigger or better market if you want to work in sports. I mean, whether it's college athletics, professional, I mean, all the major professional sports teams are here. There's no shortage of events coming through here. Um, you know, it's. I'm not just saying that. It's, it's, it, I can't think of another one that just has so much going on and so many great opportunities, both professionally and academically. I agree with everything Caleb said, and I'm, he said he said a couple of things that I was going to say, but I'll pick up on those. One, appreciate that getting into the industry is incredibly difficult, and I explain to you why. These jobs, when people get them, they rarely leave. When I hired my first employee at Major League Baseball, it was 1992. He retired last year. Okay, so it shows people get into these jobs and many of them stay for 20, 25, 30 years. So turnover is, is, is very limited. So the most important thing in my view, as Caleb said, is to build a network of relationships, but I think it's also critically important that you garner and gain as much relevant experience, good experience, in areas that are going to be relevant to the industry. You can be doing something in insurance, oil and gas, or whatever it may be, but if that experience is relevant to the industry and you're really good at what you do, at some point you'll find an opportunity will come your way. Think about the industries that affect sports, labor. All of those things are areas where if you gain experience, and you're patient and you build that network of relationships, at some point a door will open for you. I would say um, when you think about the NFL or Major League Baseball or the NBA, those teams are very, very small. That network is very small. When you think about your colleges and high schools, huge network, and you have multiple sports. We have 26, and then we have club sports at ASU. So there's opportunity to get involved in sport, learn the trade, learn what you're interested in, learn what you're not interested in, and network. Our, for example, our head hockey coach, he was the coach of the club team for years, and he was a professional outside of the sport. He now has been for the last six seasons, I think seven, um, our head varsity hockey coach. So just think about that. He was working in a different industry, Was was working as the ASU club hockey coach for years. They won national championships, and then we hired him as our head hockey varsity coach. We just opened up our multi-purpose mullet arena where we're now showcasing hockey and wrestling, and we will be other women's sports, and we also are hosting the Coyotes. And so what I would say, especially for, for anyone in the room, but in particular for women, since we talked about this is our time, you really need to think about getting involved in organizations like 
women in sports and events. There's a local chapter here in Arizona, in Phoenix, and in Tucson, and it's a national organization. There are also other organizations for women in particular and minorities to get involved in sport. I would encourage everyone to get involved in these organizations because that's a different network than um, with people that are already working in sport and they may be working um, at a club team or they may be working at the league or they may be working like me at ASU or in high school or ancillary organizations that support sport and it's already embedded in what they do their job is to provide opportunity to network with them, and then that just continues to build your network. Uh, my advice would be don't be afraid to have a conversation. Don't be afraid to talk to somebody at a restaurant or have a cup of coffee with somebody. Have that conversation and learn what they do. Be, be friends with them. Don't be afraid to have that conversation. Mine is twofold. I would say, number one, say yes to as many opportunities as you can while you're in college. Obviously, within reason, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. We all have a lot going on. But once you get those opportunities, I think it's really important to be very intentional with what you do. Um, you know, I've overseen interns for the Oakland A's, and the ones that stand out are always the ones that are very intentional about you know, what they're doing and they're asking questions and they're asking about the why of sports and like, why do we do this? And, you know, it might seem like a dumb question to them, but it's like, they just, they're the ones that are wanting to learn. Um, so just not going through the motions of things and really, you know, trying to understand why we do certain things and how that can, that, that skill can translate when you do, you know, apply for another internship or a full-time role, I think is really important. And if I can add to that, I, th I think there's a tendency for a lot of people interested in working in sports to think that if you're a fan, that's your entry into the industry. People aren't looking to hire fans. They're looking to hire people who are going to be assets to their organization. Yes, you can be passionate about it. You can be knowledgeable about it, and you can love it. But you've got to sell them on how you're going to help their team, their organization, whatever it may be, be better. That's the most important thing. And I'll just add, like, before I came to the Sons and the Mercury, I knew close to nothing about basketball, and they still hired me. So um, I've learned a lot more since, since I started a year and a half ago, but you do not need to have, you know, super extensive sports knowledge and be able to rattle off a bunch of facts to be able to work in sports. It's about, you know, your work, work ethic and, and what you can bring to the table. I think also, while you're here, it's something I wish I took more advantage of, even though I already did, but ASU has so many different networks that come here, and people, big name people to come talk to students and take advantage of the people that come here and the connections that you can make or the opportunities that they give you, because I know when I was here, CBS came, NBC came, Fox came, ABC, and I was, I came to some of the events, but not all the events, and now I'm like, oh, I wish I went to every single one because now I could have talked to all these people. I see them often now working in the industry. Um, and I wish I had that connection to just be like, oh, hi, I met you at ASU. Um, but yeah, la my last question I want to go down the road is what has been your favorite moment working in sports? That is a really tough question. And I don't, I don't know if I could pick one, but I mean, there are just some times when you know, I'm, we work at the arena, we work at Footprint Center, so sometimes coming into work or leaving and, and walking out into the bowl and it's empty and just seeing that and, you know, thinking how lucky that we are to, to do what we do and, and to impact the people that come through our building every day is just, is just really special. So I don't know if I could, I could pick one moment. There's a ton that, that come to mind, but um, it's, it's kind of those moments where I can slow down and really reflect on my journey and kind of how I got here that are, that are the most special to me. My favorite moment was getting the phone call saying, Kara, you're now a full-time employee with Major League Baseball. Like, I had that goosebumps. Um, that was the most exciting phone call. I literally screamed. It was the best moment. That was my favorite. Um, I would say I have two that just happened this week. <clears throat> um, giving back to others is really important for me. So I have two gymnasts. One is the president of our Black Student Athlete Association. So this is a full circle moment for me at ASU because this is year seven for me. 
I was working at the National Football League again when we hosted the Super Bowl here in 2015. So Isabel Redwin was our student athlete representative at the NFL Social Justice Town Hall. That was so amazing for me to be able to honor her and for her to crush it. And she got to meet all of these different people that were on the panel, as well as all the different people that attended. And she's passionate about social justice, which is why I selected her. And then a couple days ago, we have another student athlete. Her name is Sienna Samley. And she also is on our women's gymnastics team. She's local. And she was our representative on the NFL Youth Town Hall um, that we hosted at ASU West. And it was critical for me to be able to get her um, an opportunity so she could speak to the valley of middle schoolers that attended that forum. And she is interested in communications like you. And she was able to network with the folks that were at the NFL Town Hall, as well as the individuals that were there in attendance. And all these little kids came up and they wanted her to sign the footballs that the National Football League sent for the players that were on the panel. So that was really a full circle moment. And it's like, that's my why. Gosh, I have so many uh, calling players to let them know they were inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame, things like that. But the moment for me that I, when I tell this story, it often makes me very emotional. It was at the All-Star Game in Toronto, the Baseball All-Star Game in Toronto. I believe it was 1994. And prior to the game, I'm walking into the Kingdom, and excuse me, the Sky Dome, and there was an African-American woman sitting outside in the entry area to the um, to the stadium, and she had two young boys with her, and they had on their Toronto Blue Jays outfits, and they were all, you know, baseball bat in hand, and I said, are you guys going into the game? And she said, oh, no, we can't afford it. We just came down here to take in the experience, and I said, you mean you're just going to sit here? She said, yeah, we're just going to watch people go by and take pictures, and I reached in my pocket, and I took out three tickets, and I said, here's my gift to you. And the little boy looked at his mom and cried and said, Mommy, is that God? Those were his words. And that resonated to me because it showed me that this game of baseball, this great game of base, baseball, can attract and impact people in such an emotional way that they impact me. And that's, that's my moment. Thanks for having me follow up that, Don. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's hard to pick a moment as well. I mean, all, these are all great, you know, and I have very similar stories. I think for what kind of stood out for me, though, I would say it was kind of our best year, if you will, um, in 2011. We just had a lot going on, great successes for our organization. Uh, we opened up Salt River Fields, which was our spring training facility uh, out in, you know, past Scottsdale, and it's the first major league and only, still the only major league facility on Indian land. So it was interesting, the dynamic, you know, of doing that and bringing that ballpark to that community as well as trying to learn sovereign immunity laws and everything else that we had to think about in that regard. Um, we hosted the major league baseball all-star game. So a lot of stakeholders throughout the league and throughout the world for that matter, you know, were here on site and we made the postseason. So that was, 2011 kind of stood out as a great year for me and, and really made me appreciate again, you know, the opportunity that I had to be in this industry. Oh, for me, to go off of what you said, in 2020, most of us lost our jobs in sports, especially for the network, just because there was no sports going on. So for me, I was so excited when sports came back because I was like, I have my job back. It's <laughs> amazing. And I was so nervous when it was Nothing, and now I'm so appreciative to be back to where I am. But I'd love to open up the floor to any questions. Does anyone have any questions? Yes? Honestly, at the Cronkite School, I got it in all of the classes that I took. I took videography, photography, editing. It was, I think I learned it all here and just because of all the classes that they taught here, but also at Fox specifically, a lot of my fellow coworkers didn't take broadcast school. Some of them took business school. So they're learning it too at Fox and when they're a PA or starting out as well. I would say I don't know any of the videography and photography and that whole bit, but lean on your professors. 
have those conversations. If it wouldn't have been from one of my professors, I wouldn't have gone to the country club route. I had no idea what I was going to do, and graduation was a month away. So having those conversations with your professors, and they can point you in the right direction. If I could just add, <clears throat> I would say that if you're a student here at ASU and you're interested in any of this, we need you in Sun Devil Athletics. We got 26 sports. So we always need our student athletes to be showcased, featured. They have stuff to tell. And we liaison very closely with all of the um, professors and the units here. But we also get outreach all the time from students that want to learn and they want to figure out how to support a team. So we want, we want to be able to have students um, showcase the fact that our men's swimming team is number one in the nation. Um, and a lot of times the students that, wanna, that are here, they want to work basketball and football. But what about these people? So that's a lot. There's a lot of opportunity there. Mine was juggling schedules. I had three jobs on top of a full schedule. So organization and being able to, to juggle all those schedules was the biggest challenge for me. I, I think I would say the same thing, but just to add on it, I think like while you're in college, it's a great time to you know learn those time management skills and really hone in on those because you know when you get to the real world and you have a real job, like there's not gonna be anybody holding your hand, telling you where to be, when to be, when to be there. Um, and, and kind of learning that in college helped me tremendously, you know, once I, once I graduated and I had a full-time job and it was, it's now up to me to, to manage my time the best I can. If I could respond from a professor's perspective and I would say not enough students take advantage of tapping into the professor's knowledge and having that personal one-on-one -on -one time so that they can ask questions and get a level of comfort that they actually have absorbed the information and have knowledge to succeed in the class. I think too many people are afraid to say, I don't understand that. Can you explain that? Can you clarify that? There's nothing wrong with asking questions and letting people know, the professor know you don't know or understand something because that's how you're going to advance in the class and develop the knowledge base that will take you on to that next class and that degree that you're pursuing. I would say also it's good to get input, whether it's from your family, your friends, what have you, but keep your eye on your own prize. Don't worry about what everyone else thinks is best for you. When I was in law school, people were like, you're not trying to go on law journal, you're not trying to get top of your class, you're not doing on-campus interviews. I'm like, no, because I'm going to work in sports. So I'm going to go work for the A's, the Warriors. I'm going to go do other things that I know is going to put me in the best position for those types of opportunities. And one of my close friends, he stressed out being, I want to be number one in the class, number one in the class. He ended up being number, number one in the class, got a high paying job at a big time law firm, left within two years because he hated it. You know, and here I am working for a baseball team waving at him. So again, it's great to get input from everybody. It's, I mean, especially because I didn't know what I necessarily wanted to do. I mean, even after passing the bar exam, I didn't apply for a single job to be a lawyer. I just knew I wanted to work in sports in some capacity. And so, you know, definitely get input from everybody, but, you know, don't be deterred from your ultimate goal. I would say that <clears throat> it's important to take advantage of um, student services. So they have tutors, they're mentors, and it's not because you feel less than, but you can take advantage of that so that they can help you with organizational skills based on the courses that you're taking. And I think a lot of times students don't always want to reach out because they think that you're not smart enough. That's not the point. They're able to help you based on the classes that you have and based on your schedule to build out that schedule and to be organized. One other thing, because that's a great question you asked. Look around your, at your peers because that's a support network that's going to be invaluable in getting you through the college experience. And you may be surprised to find that you actually have a lot of things in common with one or more persons who might, might be people you come together with and form some new enterprise or some business opportunity or they just become study partners. So don't ignore the people who are in that space with you because many of them are going to be experiencing the same things you have and have the same questions you have. And then you can now pool all of that knowledge and sit down in a room with someone who can help guide you through the process and you learn together, you mature together, and that's incredibly beneficial. 
I 100% agree with Dawn, just because I met my closest friends my senior year at ASU, just because I was in the same class with them, and all of my study abroad friends who went to the Olympics with me are who I actually hang out with now outside of school. So get to know the people around you, because those are the people who love the same things as you, do the same things that you want to do in the future, so they connect with you more. That's a, that's a good question. It's one I can't answer specifically, but I would lean on, you know, like we talked about your professors, like they'll, they have those connections. And then another tool for internships is also, um, you know, teamwork online or LinkedIn and just reaching out and making those connections. Um, but I would say the more, the more questions you can ask to, to your professors and people who would know, then they can kind of point you in the right direction. I would also say that, <clears throat> um, really being aware of your venue. So like, like Caleb said, there's so much going on sports-wise in Arizona. We have the Super Bowl right now, but we got waste management. They just had the Barrett-Jackson. Like these are all related, right? So getting involved and volunteering to work a sporting event is really important. Learning that there's a local organizing committee, they always need volunteers. That's how you get connected with people. Um, in, in May, we'll be hosting the NCAA Men's and Women's Golf Tournament. You might not be interested in golf, but there are a lot of people that are working in that environment to volunteer, and you get connected with a lot of different people. So I'd say volunteering, being mindful of your environment and that there may be sports-related um, opportunities coming that are outside of the university. So they're just here. And then if you're a student, that's even like adding on to it because there's 942 crew like I mentioned to you and there are other sports um, groups that you can join as a student but outside of being already affiliated with ASU it's just really being mindful and tapping into those resources. Yeah, I mean, like our organization like especially during the season we have 30 plus internship opportunities um, but again they're highly coveted but there's enough professional teams including our own that are around that you can be proactive and just ask for infor informational interviews and meet the people at these different organizations and get a feel for you know, what part of the industry really most appeals to you and get a better feel. Because you might think this is a cool internship and you get it and you realize this is not for me. But the more you network and meet people, and I think most people in sports, you know, much like we're doing here, like we like to pay it forward. You know? More often than not, people are going to say yes you know, if you demonstrate you know, your, your, your sincere interest of uh, being in our industry. Okay, we have time for one last question. Yes. So, each and every one of you inspires someone like me and other people to be involved in sports. But I want to know who was your guys' inspiration to be where you are and to get to where you are now? Who or what was that instilled that drive in you guys to be where you are now? For me, it was my mom just because she came to Cronkite and she really pushed me to come here. So I, that's what got me into sports. But currently, it'd be my boss, Judy. She's the only woman executive at Fox and she's in charge of every single almost major event. And I look up to her so much because I think she's just so amazing at her, what she does and everyone looks up to her too. I would, I'll say for me, it starts with my parents. Um, I'm an immigrant, my parents were immigrants, and they instill in me this incredible discipline to pursue my dream and to be the best that I can be. And I always set a goal for myself. I always said to myself that I will never not get a job because they said I wasn't qualified. They may say we don't have a job open, or we may find somebody who we like or prefer, but they'll never say I'm not qualified. So I always set that standard for myself. And within Major League Baseball, a gentleman who's now deceased, Peter Widrington, became my mentor. Peter was the chairman of the Blue Jays. He was the chairman of Labatt's before that. And sitting in a room and watching him operate and conduct business taught me a lot that I've been able to absorb and pass on to others. So I would say those were the two stages. For me too, personally, I would say, you know, my parents, my father in particular, and I see a lot of parents here, I presume, and that's great that you're here supporting your, your kids. Um, 
Professionally, I would say, and I'm not just saying this because he's my boss, but Derek Hall, our, our president and CEO, who was also an ASU alum, um, you know, he, he gives a lot of empowerment to his staff and his employees. Uh, he, he says, you know, the fan doesn't come first, believe it or not. He says the employees come first because he's like, if you treat the employees right, they'll pay that forward, you know, to the people that they work, deal with on an everyday basis. So um, I think that's really great and creates a lot of opportunities for everyone. And um, we're, we're definitely on the forefront of a lot of, you know, a lot of what's going on in the industry. In fact, going back to a topic we covered earlier, um, our on-field manager for our AA team is going to be a female this upcoming season. So we're one of the first teams to do that. So there's a lot of, you know, within our organization itself, a leader like Derek who's, you know, creating those opportunities is tremendous. I'm very lucky. My very first internship in sports, I told you I worked for the Oakland A's. Um, the director of spring training over there, his name is Joe Pun. Um, he has been my mentor since day one, since the day that I interviewed with him. Um, the way he runs that stadium over in Mesa, like, I, it is second to none. Like, he, it's basically him and then, you know, his coordinators, his interns, like, everybody else behind him. But for me, Joe is just the embodiment of doing things the right way, doing them with integrity, doing them with honesty. Um, and he really took the time to, you know, take his interns and his coordinators under his wing and really you know, pay it forward and make sure that we had the tools we needed to be successful when we did apply for those full-time positions. So, you know, I, I'm very thankful that he, he's the kind of person that, you know, gave me the tools to, to do what I needed to do and then was very hands-off and he gave me the freedom to make those mistakes and learn from them. Um, and I've taken that with me to this day. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the panel. Thank you. All right. So this is where the mama bear comes out in me. I um, want to give you guys some advice on how to make the most of the next half of this event. Um, just to give you a fun fact, because this might terrify you, so you might as well hear it in advance. The average student in a university, not at ASU, but just in universities, changes their degree how many times? Any guesses? Seven. Did you say 17? Oh, seven? Okay. <laughs> Fair. I was like, 17? Who? <laughs> yeah, so three to five is on average. And I, I want to start by sharing that because this next part of the event gives you the opportunity to sit down with my colleagues and hear more, kind of take a deeper dive into specific degree programs. You'll have two sessions, so we call these the academic sessions. Each session is about 40 minutes or so. Um, so make sure you attend too. Even if you feel like you know exactly what degree program you want to do, you have already applied to ASU, you're ready to go, take advantage of the second session just because it'll give you the chance to, number one, hear about other degree programs at ASU that may interest you. The other reason is that there might be a chance you might find some opportunities to take electives or maybe do a minor or even a concentration, a certificate, something within another degree program. As you'll see when you take advantage of the campus tour, is Cronkite. Don't you need to switch? Oh, yeah, we're good. Thank you, tech team, for keeping me organized. Um, Cronkite is here. We're all sitting here in the Cronkite building, the School of Mass Communication and Journalism. But just right across the way is Watts College. And then right across the way is the law school. So you literally could be a student here and then walk into another building and be a student there as well. So please uh, make the most of the experience while you're here. We know traffic is nuts anyway, so you might as well just stay here and enjoy your time on campus. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break you up into the first session groups. I would also recommend maybe on your way grab a soda or a water. You're in Arizona, so where are my Eagles people again? You all need to stay hydrated while you're here. Um, so grab a water, grab a soda, and then you'll go to your first session. So. Uh, let's see, let me get uh, Watts College, it looks like you're up front. Um, so <laughs> if you are looking at like the tourism or the um, sports and recreation management programs, you can go with Watts College <coughs> for your first session. And then let's see here, for W.P. Carey School of Business, my colleague Sam is standing here in the black sweatshirt, and Sam will take the business students to his breakout session. And then I'm actually, where's Cronkite? You guys in the back. Okay, 
So for the Cronkite students, let's have you head to the back. We'll kind of split everybody up a bit. And then my last group, Dean, where is Dean? Perfect. If you are looking at health sciences, pre-med, any of the health-related programs, follow my colleague Dean over here in this far corner. And then we'll reconvene here after the first session.